to Scarborough Fair. If you are, please buy me some cheese. Hello and welcome to the opener. This week I'll be playing a game called Sheriff of Nottingham. Now listen, I like dressing up as a medieval muppet. I enjoy doing that, but I can't continue to do that for this video because it really isn't what Sheriff of Nottingham is about. The reality of it is that Sheriff of Nottingham is customs, the game. Just cheese in here, is it, sir? In a bright yellow bag like this? Just full of cheese? Seems unlikely, doesn't it, sir? So each player in Sheriff of Nottingham runs a market stall. We all have a market stall. I'm the blue baker man. They're the red man with the barrel. Doesn't really matter. You have a big pile of money and you have to fill your store with things and the person at the end of the game who has the most money and the most things is the winner. But, 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 you've got to get past the sheriff. And the way that works is basically you take it in turns to be the sheriff of Nottingham. So you put your goods into your little coloured pouch and then you just pass it over to the sheriff, toss it over. What have I got in this bag? I'll tell you in a minute. In terms of how this works, there are only a couple of rules which are really important. You're not allowed to lie to the sheriff about how many cards are in the bag. You have to be honest on that account. And also, you can only send one type of goods. So you have to say there are four bits of cheese in there, or there are three chickens. Because let's be honest, you're not gonna make much money just shifting loaves of bread, and that's where contraband comes in. Ooh, contraband. Even the word contraband sounds delicious. It's like a, a box of chocolates that you're not allowed, but you want. The thing is, if you can get your contraband through to the market without it being opened, then loads of money. But if it does get opened, and the sheriff does find that perhaps you have got contraband, then you have to then pay a fine to the sheriff. But oh no, maybe the sheriff got it wrong and maybe you were actually just carrying the cheese. It's not a euphemism. You were carrying just cheese. Uh-oh, then the fine that you would have to pay gets reversed. So the sheriff then has to pay you money for everything he got wrong. Because the most common question in a game of Sheriff Nottingham tends to be, what will you pay me not to open this? And people will say, well, I'm not going to give you anything. And you'll go, oh, are you sure you're not going to give me anything about that? And they go, ah, I'll give you three coins, three coins. That's not enough for three coins. For this, three coins, really? Mm. It's wonderful. And the trick is you can offer people anything. You can even offer people money to open other people's bags. You can say, I'll give you five coins if you don't open mine, but if you open his. And wonderfully, you can promise people things that you might then not be able to deliver. You can say, I'll give you one of the crossbows. If they don't have any crossbows in the bag, you've just been duped. Nothing you can do about it. Any deal which is based on giving somebody something there and then is set in stone. You are bound by it by the game rules. But anything that's based on, I'll give you this in a minute if you give that back, completely based on trust. And as you know, when you base things completely on trust, People are mean! But then you start to ask yourself the question, well, how much money do I have to give the sheriff to not open that? How much is it worth? Is it worth that much? Or maybe I could make them think that I've got lots of contraband in the bag when actually I don't, forcing them to open it and having to pay me money. It's a game of mind games, greed, and some really top draw bluffing. But the thing that makes this game amazing, and I'm not it sounds silly, but the thing that makes this game really amazing are these things. Specifically, these little plastic things. Because once you hear that pop, it's over. Nothing else you can say or do means anything. You can be like, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you that, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. Maybe somebody's just said, no, it's four, it's four apples, it's four apples. And you've just gone, it's four apples, it's four apples, yeah, yeah. They go, yeah, it's for apples. Oh, mid-sentence, killer. Sometimes it's worth it just to see the look on people's faces. 
But once you hear that pop, once that pop happens, nothing matters. What's in the bag, the results are done. There's no going back. And you know what? If this game had little drawstring bags, it wouldn't work. Having that definite moment, that noise, is fantastic. And people know it's coming. When we first played this game, it was very late at night and we were quite drunk. But the guy who taught us how to play it talked about this and he was spot on. The fact that you can play with that, it's part of the game, is the way you end up teasing it, the way you end up going, you know, sure, sure you're not going to give me any more money than that? Is it not worth five? Five gold not to open? Hmm? Maybe? It's impeccable. I kind of worry that these bags might break or that the poppers might not sound as good after a while because if that happened then the game has fundamentally become much less enjoyable. That's how important these poppers are. And listen, there are lots of bluffing games out there. There's a lot to choose from. I've reviewed quite a few of them. But what's really nice about this one, and does feel different, is the power dynamic is always shifting. Everybody gets to have a go at being the big dog. And often that's something that people don't get to do unless they're particularly confident or particularly good at the game. Everybody, every round, gets the chance to be the guy who sneaks through customs with lots of black pepper, but you also get to be in the position of going, what's in this? Hmm? Are you lying to me? Are you telling me the truth? Everyone gets to pretend that they're that guy who gives people hassle in an airport. I mean, everybody's wanted to do that, haven't they? Obviously with this stuff though, there is a balance and it's really nice that you get to take it in turns being the evil baron, but also never long enough that it gets serious. It's always very light, it's always very fun. And a lot of the fun of the game is watching your friend take on this caricature and riffing with them and playing with them, getting to be Sheriff of Nottingham one minute and Robin Bloody Hood the next. And you've also got this arc that runs throughout the game between rounds of when you draw cards, you can choose to draw from the main deck or two different discard piles. And obviously what that means is it means if you want, you can stock up on loads of contraband, but people will see you taking it. And they'll go, he took loads of pepper last round. Don't trust him, he's trying to get pepper through. Open his bag. Check his bags, officer. Good lord. It gets heated, it gets raucous, it's really fun. And the problem with that is when you get to the end of a game, you then have to do this quite complex scoring system, which involves you counting the numbers up on all of the cards. So that's worth six, that's worth three, that's worth three. You're doing all that and then you have to work out who's got the most apples, the person with the most apples gets another 20, the person with the second most apples gets another 10. You've just been having loads of fun, loads of really loud, silly fun. And now you have to do maths. It's like being expected to fill in a questionnaire upon leaving a party. Also, I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit of a pain to set up. I mean, there are so many cards. The deck is, is massive, and there aren't that many different cards. There are lots of bread, lots of cheese, lots of chickens, and lots of contraband, but the problem is there, shuffling a deck of this size is a real pain in the arse unless you've got gigantic hands. And I've actually got quite large hands. And I know this seems like a damn thing to complain about, but it is a pain, especially when you play the three player variant of the game, which basically takes out bread. So you only have three types of goods and you then have to take out some of the contraband as well. Some of the cards are marked. You know what, going through a deck and taking out cards, that's not much of a hassle, but then shuffling them back in again and making it so the bread is properly shuffled in. It just, it's a pain, but that's a pain for you as a host. That's not something I can complain about in terms of the opener because the people you're playing with aren't really gonna see that that much. Sheriff of Nottingham is brilliantly raucous fun, but I can't help but feel that it could have been better. I mean, so much of the fun of this game is based on the social situations that it engineers, these fun, stupid power struggles, the brilliant sound of the poppers, and, the rest of the game around it, like, could have been better. So, it's a brilliantly simple party game, which is kind of let down by an overly complex scoring system when you just want to work out who's won so you can play it again, because it's good. It's still a great opener, but it's one that as a game, especially as a kind of reprint of a game that came out a while ago, it could have been tweaked to be a better game. So, mm, it's really good, but it's kind of frustrating because it could have been amazing. I still recommend it though. Anyway, enough of that, let's get extravagant. And today on the opener, I'm gonna be showing you how to make some delicious chicken apple bread. And to make chicken apple bread, you're going to need the things in this bag. 
No, it's just... It's just a bag full of cheese. Oh, oh, oh. oh I see, it's a joke. It's a, it's a, it's a... Ah. Oh. Come on, this is disappointing, isn't it? Hmm. Well, I mean, I've got this cake. I've got this cake. This has got apples in it, actually. And some cinnamon, or cinnamon I think, as well. Though. Um, but I mean, I don't know how to make this cake, because my mum made it. It's very good, but I don't know how it's made. So I can't say how it's made. Sorry, I mean, I say that this is disappointing for all of us, but to be honest, I'm kind of alright. Sorry.